do an unboxing of Fat Matt. Um, and one thing is, is people smell really. It's got a little bit of a smell to it, but I heard it goes away real quick. You have to expect some kind of smell. Don't know where I'm going with this. I got it. Don't have a lot of shelf space around here. So thickness wise looks really good. Extremely sticky. Now this is probably a really fresh batch. Um, really it's the smell test. That's definitely not asphalt. Um, it's got a little bit of a smell to it, but it hasn't aired out at all. I would guarantee this is fresh. These guys are very close. They're in Ohio, so uh, all right. Um, so this is the 80 mil stuff. Like I said, it's real sticky. Uh, pretty darn thick. Nice thick silver. This is the what the Fat Man Extreme. Uh, the smell is pretty much gone. It's definitely not asphalt. It's got a little bit to it, but I'll guarantee this is fresh out of the factory. Um, these guys are really close. They're within a half hour drive of my house. And I'll guarantee this is brand new stuff. So it uh, hasn't been sitting around forever. I've heard, you know, it off gases a little bit like any, any, any of these things are going to. Um, I guess when you're shipping it from Russia or whatever, it takes some time and get, maybe it gets some time to air out. But uh, anyways, not bad. I'm going to go ahead and uh, see about this stuff. This is definitely going in the trunk, though. I need to finish up a little bit of the back and a little bit of the trunk. So, I'm right, still working on cleanup on this guy. So as you can see, it's a little bit. It's just going to. It's just going to make it. So. Um, it's tight, but I'll get a little, maybe I might have to cut a little, I'm going to clean that up a bit right there. So, and I'll bend this, clean that up, seal it up a bit. I'll seal this all up so we don't have a big gap there. But, uh, for the bottom of this, you can see, it actually fits pretty well. And this, this oil, this air filter is fairly small. I might just cut out a little bit of rubber here, and then if I want to, I might, I'll clean these edges up. I might just dumb dumb it, and uh, that would solve any problems. I'm worried a little worried about the heat on the dumb dumb, but uh, I think it'll be fine. Um, I said I wouldn't even I don't even care about locking. Well, you don't lock it in, but uh, like it's not going to lock into this. Fortunately, like fortunately, kind of locked out because these air cleaners are pretty thin. So I don't know how good a job they do. I guess we'll see how my engine runs, see how dirty they get, but. Uh, it says it's pre-oiled and all that. I, just, I would think Spectre is pretty good. So uh, it says it's just a little bit of... I can't really get this on, so I'm going to have to cut this back here. This is really... This area right here is really... It was squeezing in, so I might just cut a little edge off this edge and just kind of put a little bit of dum-dum and get it locked up, sealed up tight. To... So as you can see, I got some Dextron 6. Now this is a 1957 Chrysler... Uh, Transmission out of a 2000, I'm not out of a 1957 Chrysler New Yorker uh, 392. This is the original 392. This is the transmission that came with this engine. So, typically, in what 1957 GM came out with this stuff called Type A ATF transmission fluid, right? ATF automatic transmission fluid, Type A, whatever. Chrysler licensed it off of GM, so they used the same Ford was like, F you guys, we're gonna be different and be a bunch of fuck ups, but um. We're going to make more money. We want to sell our own oil. Uh, so, I put, so anyways, after a while, whatever, they've gone to their own Chrysler ATFs, whatever it is. But, uh, majority of them were always backward compatible to Type A's, up to like, like even confirmed, it's up to like 76, the Chrysler's all, Chrysler, all, all Chrysler ATF, you know, dealer, the dealer can that says Chrysler ATF, whatever, plus or plus something, three, it's all backward compatible to Type A up to that point. I can't really verify it's 100% since then. You gotta understand these things just start talking about VVTs and all that bullshit. Um, uh, so 
The thing you really want to look out for is obviously GM was like, look, we got to maintain backward compatibility, blah, blah, blah. So they came out with Dextron, whatever, in the 80s. Whenever, I don't know when it came out, maybe, who knows, maybe 60s. So anyways, the name. So one thing that confirmed my suspicion is recommended for, um, for use in applications requiring Dextron 2 or 3. So that there will tell you. And then obviously no VVT, no CVT. So, see it degresses, degrades less over time, maintains smooth shifting, reduced transmission wear. So, although this is a synthetic, it is, I mean, as long as it's, as long as you see that type, that means your viscosity is going to be right, you're not going to be blowing anything up. Now, this isn't, you know, this isn't dyno oil. I don't know if it would be considered a little thinner or whatever. All I know is it's compatible with, with type A. And that's really what matters. So, uh. Now, the thing is with this Dextron 6, they skip, they don't have a Dextron 5, and I think a Dextron 4 or 5. Now, I, I've seen like weird cans with 4s and 5s, and they weren't from GM. So, I think they were like aftermarket. If you go like <laughs> the dollar store, sometimes you'd see like cans of like 4s, 3s, and 4s, and 4s and 5s. I'm like, wait, that doesn't exist. They went straight from 3 to 5, obviously, in around 2006 or whatever. 2006 cars required ATF, uh, Dextron 6. So pre, this is all backward compatible, so you can't do that, but you can't go Dextron 3 in a, Dex, in, in a 2006 car. I'm sure you probably could, but it's not a good for it. But uh, anyway, so that's this. Just, so you can, so this is backward compatibility to the beginning of Type A vehicles, probably before that. But uh, so this is a good sort, good valve good stuff, whatever, synthetic. Probably overkill for the amount of miles I'll get driven, but at least I won't be changing. This this recommended AT Type A was going to be every 10,000 miles. I don't know what kind of miles it'll see a year. It might see 10,000 miles next year. Hopefully, knock on steel that it runs and all that. But uh, there you go. There's your mini ATF compatibility. Go with the Dextron 6. It doesn't matter. Um, but uh, there it is. So anyways, get her filled up here. Got to use one of these long, weird ones. So, put the rest of it in. Okay, so there's all the there's also this discussion of what is it type F and Mercon Dexron is the same stuff I think, but uh, there's a, this discussion that this stuff's too slippery and should be using type F and type F was thicker and obviously Dyno oil and certain shift points say it somehow affects the shift points though. But like I said, if you talk to any transmission guy, the transmission reblower guys are going to tell you to use Dexron three. Which Dextron 6 is actually Dextron 3, so, well, back compatible with better better heat, better everything else. Now, how is it going to affect your shift points? Don't really know. Um, I think most people are okay with the Dextron, Dextron 3, quote, quote, Dextron. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, so that is another point is people talk about slippage and stuff. Like, oh, it's too slippery, it's too thin, stuff like that. But, uh, I don't know what else you're going to get, so thing of advice is don't switch oils once you put the oils in if it doesn't work though obviously you know switch um, if you think this isn't going to work this stops starts slipping for you something you know your transmission's good whatever go to a different go to a dextron three or something um like obviously something changed in the threes and the between three and six but it's supposed to be backward compatible so um i've noticed i'd start to either take a picture or i'll cut this out put it in my glove box so I know what kind of oil I'm buying for the transmission I'm buying for the engine even on your daily driver um, you should not be switching these synthetics back and forth because they're not always compatible um, I know I've been pretty bad I typically go with mobile one but you know lately I've been just like grabbing whatever's on the shelf at Walmart and as I'm walking through like pens oil or something I need that's a no-no you shouldn't be doing that you'll gum up your rings um, and stuff so Make mark down what engine your engine oil you're putting in it. Kind of a pain in the ass, something else to keep track of, but uh, that's something I learned.